And now, coming to you live. Good morning. Good morning. Everybody, let's sing along. Hi there. My name is Roland Sandberg, and I tune in all the way here in Finland, Europe. Lots of greetings from Finland. Good morning, and welcome to another edition of Talking Tunes. I'm your announcer, Kitty Litter. Now it's time to talk to the loon tunes of Talking Tunes. Here they are, the Talking Tunes crew. 91X, FAMA, Baja California, Mexico. Welcome to Talking Tunes 2020. All right, so you're, you're, uh... How, how are you dealing with the new norm? We're talking with Peter Tripp, the curly-headed kid in the third row. <laughs> yeah, and I just slid back to row 15. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, well, you know, you did something that I just did about, I don't know, a week or so ago, but I did a little better job than you did. <laughs> and what cut, was that? What, well, and what would that be that you did a better job well, of? Well, I cut I cut my own hair uh, with with the... But I've cut my kids' hair. I've cut my my father-in-law's hair. I've cut you know lots of hair before, so I was a little bit, I guess, better with the <laughs> the cutters than you. But well, uh, it, well, you know how it is. I've never cut my own hair. Right. I, mean, I never I, have either. I trimmed them my mustache and my beard when I had one. So they had this trimmer kit on Amazon, and it was only seventeen dollars. It, no, it was no great big fancy thing. I said, well, you know what? They had the three attachments, and they had a number two, which was what my hair lady usually cuts my sides with. And I said, oh, I'll try it. So <laughs> I got it, and I had it three or four days, and I was kind of hesitant to do something. And I said, you know what? I'll take it up to the bathroom. So I took it up to the bathroom and laid it on the counter for another two days. <laughs> and then I said, you know what? Well, I charged it up. And yeah. then I said, ah, I'll try this. So it buzzed, and... It seemed like it was working pretty good. So I put on that number two, and I started going up the sides. Oh, not too bad. So that was all I did. And I went downstairs, and the next day I said, you know what? I'll try the other side, see how I'd done one side. <laughs> <laughs> so, you just so did one did, side at a time. It didn't look too bad. But then, well... I got this one up too far, so maybe I'll go do the other one up too far. Well, you know how that went. Yeah. <laughs> up too far, up too far. Do the other. Next thing you know, I'm on top of my head, and I just said, oh, the heck with it. <laughs> and that worked out pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you find out how much how much hair you really have up top when you, <laughs> when you do yeah, that. I, you know? I have no bald spots. My son does, but I don't. Yeah, okay. <laughs> You know, um, I used a, a three on my sides and a five on the top, so that's, yeah. that's what I did. But you got to go. My son actually told me what what to do because he, you know, he's cut his hair for National Guard. But you go up to the like the, where the curve come, starts coming on your head. Yeah, that's you go up to that and you stop. That's when you feather it out. So, but just just you know, just letting you know for the next time. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a long ride. Gonna be a long way down the road. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. Though I cut mine kind of short too. It kind of surprised me. The worst thing is trying to get the back though, because you can't see anything. So right, I yeah. had I had Terry help me with that, but I've looked in the mirror and and she didn't do the job that I'm I'm gonna have a um um what do you call it Billy Ray Cyrus Cyrus uh uh not a mohawk but a <laughs> yeah. You're- yeah, where the hair's growing long yeah, in the what, back. Whatever yeah. that thing is called. Yeah, yeah. Well, I haven't had one since the 80s, so I can't remember what it was called. But I think that's going to be happening pretty soon. But I can always get the trimmers out and do it again. But the worst thing about these trimmers that I use, they're, the last time I used them, I used them on my, my dog's butt to clean, to cut her hair, you know. So I cleaned oh, them. I cleaned them, you know. But yeah, still, I hope so. Just, <laughs> just thinking about that was kind of scary. So. <clears throat> Anyway, I gotta I gotta tell you a story. If you got any too, I you know share them with me. But uh, the new norm kind of thing, and Terry and I have been going. My wife and I have been going to, you know, just different locations every Sunday, just trying to kind of travel a little farther than just right around here, right around town. Um, we went to you know went to Ludington and went to the lake and and you know looked at the the lighthouse and and the people out there. Blah blah blah. We didn't get out of the car. But that got to be kind of rough. That was a little too far because I had to pee really bad when I got home. I almost blew up. But anyway, 
And then we went to uh, to Fremont, and I just wanted to check out Fremont to see what how the stores were over there as far as the Walmart and the and the Meyer, and they were crazy, just like you know the ones around here. And so that the the, the other trip that we went went to on Sunday was she was really hungry for uh, but you know she right. she loves the butter burger. So we said okay, so we're gonna go to Clearwater, we're gonna you know go in line and and do this. So we go to Walkers in Grand Haven, and you know it's about twenty five mile trip from our house, and and uh, we get there, and there's a there's a line all the way back to the road, and I'm thinking, man, do I really want to do this? Oh yeah, I want a burger. It's like okay, all right, fine. So we wait in the line. It really moved pretty quickly. They had actually two lines are broken into two lines, but first we <laughs> we get up there, and there's this guy sitting in this lounge lounge chair or like you know like a outside outdoor chair. And he's got no shoes on. His hair's kind of messed up, you know, and kind of long. So obviously he hasn't tried cutting his own hair yet. But, you know, so first I think, and I'm thinking some bum that's there that's, you know, trying to get some money or something. And, but then he comes up and he's, he's talking to the cars and I'm thinking, what the heck is he going to like, you know, panhandle in here or what? <laughs> so <clears throat> he comes up to my window. He doesn't have a mask on, doesn't have gloves, doesn't have nothing, you know, just, and he's in his, and he's in his socks. <laughs> so he comes oh. up, he comes up to the car and I kind of crack the window a little bit. And he says, uh, are you paying cash or are you paying credit? And I said, uh, cash. And he said, they showed me, well, this is the line for cash and this is the line for credit. So I guess he was out there for that reason. But you know, what, this guy was like in his maybe fifties, maybe early sixties. And he's out there, he, I don't know if he's like the owner of the place or what, but he's out there in his socks <laughs> directing traffic. So anyway. That's a little scary. Yeah, I thought so. So anyway, so I'm thinking I can't turn around because there's 9,000 cars behind me, you know. So I said, okay, I got to go. So um, we're going up there, and we get to the place, and the, the girl that's there, the, she's got her mask on. But you look inside, and you see some of the people that are cooking the food, they're kind of masked are, kind of blow their nose i'm thinking well, what good is that you know so yeah. and some one one girl had her mask off you know and i'm thinking well you would think that in the food area you would leave those masks on you know uh, you yeah know. i would think so yeah so right there i'm thinking do i really want to eat this food you know and okay so anyway i, I paid bought the food 22 dollars for a couple of burgers and you know some shakes but anyway and I got and I got some French fries. I had to get some French fries. So anyway, we got our food. We what we do is we we pay for it at the window, and then we pull out and somebody brings it out. You know they got rubber gloves and mask on. They bring them out and bring your food out. So um, we're sitting there, we're waiting, we're waiting for our food, and you know you see all these people coming out <laughs> out of there with masks and gloves on, which is just a strange sight to me these days. You know, just seeing this happening, and the you know young girl comes out and gives me food, and you know. Thanks me for that and blah, blah, blah. Gives me the food. And I'm thinking this this time, usually we have masks on anytime we have anybody near us. We have masks ourselves. Well, we didn't put our mask on. So there were the dummies right here, right? So we take the food. We don't have our mask on. We get the food in the car. We're both hungry. We pull over way over somewhere and park so we can eat our food. And um, we don't use the hand sanitizer to clean our hats first <laughs> before we eat our food. And I'm thinking, okay, there's a dumb thing right there. You don't do that. Yeah. And then, and then I'm, so I, then I'm eating the food and then I go and get the ketchup container, and, you know, the little, pla uh, I don't know, what are they, what are they made of aluminum foil or whatever? And, yeah, I, and yeah. I, I go to get that and I'm thinking, I can't get this thing open. And I go to put it to bite it with my teeth. And I'm thinking, I'm putting this thing in my mouth. <laughs> How stupid is that? This little ketchup little, container yeah, that everybody's don't think about. Yeah, that everybody's been touching and everything else. And then I I get it open and it shoots all over my shirt. <laughs> so I got ketchup <laughs> all over my shirt. So anyway, it was it was kind of a it was kind of a wake up that if I want to go out and eat, I really got to watch what I do as far as you know, you know, wash cleaning your hands with sanitizer, wearing a mask, and and all that stuff. And it's like. You know, we were hopeful that nothing happened in that time. It's been it's been almost uh, a week now. I haven't and I haven't felt any difference. So hopefully we made it okay through that. But so it's it makes a, you, it, may, it makes you wonder because you be you begin you begin to see uh, the people around you and the mentality yeah. of some of the people 
a um, couple instances uh, like Florida, uh, I got cold hearted and said, "Good, let them open up. They wanted down wanted down there and be the test and, and kill a bunch of people." Uh, but stay away from me. I'm up here. I'm going to stay in. Yeah. But uh, I see they opened everything up. Uh, and then uh, now the governor has just shut all the beaches down because nobody was paying attention to the uh, uh, social distancing and they were all just crowding. Nobody. So that didn't work. Nobody. And then I went, into a, I went into a local store here. I won't mention the name, uh, but I went into a local store here the other day. I had my glo- little, little glo- plastic surgical gloves on and my mask and I walked into the front door and the front door, great big sign you had to go around it so you had to see it to get in the door it said state law requires everybody to wear a mask Right. I'm going, oh good, so I walk in the store, half the people are wearing masks and half aren't I'm going, well what the heck Yeah. you know, they weren't enforcing it Yeah. I so th- what's the sense, you I know. know what I mean? I know I I, I kind of got an argument with somebody on Facebook, not an argument, but to just voice my opinion on Facebook about uh, a guy that was putting a store down that uh, and required people to wear masks to go in the store. I'm thinking, you know, and, and they think it's <laughs> it's for the other people's safety too. I mean, you know, the the thing about it is, I went into I went into Walmart and I got get to get some uh, prescription, and um, the the people there were wearing masks, you know, at the at the pharmacist. And, right. and I'm wearing a mask, of course, but they didn't, they, Walmart didn't have a sign up saying you had to wear a mask. But anyway, the pharmacist, I, first, I thank the, the pharmacist for being there. I mean, I think it's, it's great that they're putting themselves in danger right there, you know, to be there right. to, to take care of us. Frontline so, workers. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I thanked her. And so after I thanked her, she thanked me for wearing my, wearing a mask also, you know, so it's like. I'm not spreading anything. She's not spreading anything. That's right. kind of the whole plan. But I don't right. know. People don't seem to understand. That. I don't know why. Uh, yeah, I don't had, know. I've had people yeah, tell well, me, oh, it's, it, a, it's a big government plot. It's like, uh, okay. Yeah. It just goes to show you that uh, the difference of opinions and the mentality of, of uh, the spectrum of people from the young to the old. And, yeah. Well, um, I think it's because I have just said, Hey, look, I'm, I'm 80 years old. She is too. I plan on being around a little longer, so I'm just going to stay in. And so I feel that I can go out when I see the cases and the deaths go way down to almost nothing. I'll start to say, well, maybe I can go out now and feel free. Now that might be next December. I don't know. Right. Yeah. They're talking January these days, but anyway, um, that's what, you know, the thing about it is too, is like I say, I think we take it more seriously because we're older and we know that right. our health is yeah. not, is with my health and it's not that great. So I'm high risk. My wife is high risk. Your wife, you, yep. you are high risk. Uh, yep. Don Anderson, who I know is also high risk. So I think the, the us people that are high risk take it a lot more seriously because we're talking death here, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. We're talking about livelihood. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, uh, I don't think we might, we might be down on the downside as to how long we're going to be here, but I would just assume see how long it could be. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. But then again, on the other hand, you start thinking, God, this sucks. I want yeah, to get up and right. do something, yeah. you know. Get up in the morning, I splash cold water on my face and now my bald head uh, <laughs> to wake myself up. Uh, and then I look out the window and it's all gray, rainy, and yeah. four and a half inches of rain. I'm going... What the heck? What's yeah. going on? Now? What can I do today? You know what I mean? Same old thing. Get up, have breakfast, and <laughs> yeah, uh, it's beginning to get affect me. And I'm a homebody. I I usually keep busy right here, have no problem, had all kinds of projects. But now I'm getting bored. Well, yeah, because you can't really get outside much because the weather's been kind of right. But yeah. We're gonna have sunshine in sixty, so we're 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 gonna be okay that, there, yeah. so we can yeah. get it's out. Supposed to, it's supposed to be nice this weekend. Yeah. So. I told myself I wasn't going to do any plant any garden or anything. So what I did is I got these uh, big containers that I'm going to plant some um, tomatoes in in my garage. <laughs> hey, and why? The, hey, why not? You I know, know. Yeah. What you, the you, heck? you could do it. You could do it. Uh, I'll put it on something you can move. Right. So it, yeah. You can roll it out. I can roll it out. Sun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So and I got those two little carts that I can put them right on, so I can roll them out whenever I want or wherever. Yep. I, yeah. So. It'll but, work. Yeah, yeah, what the heck. I mean, you know, if they don't grow, oh, well, at least it gives me some, something to do, right? Right. 
So, hey, so keep any it. word, uh, any word from, uh, what's, uh, I forgot his name now, the station guy. Are they going to be able to? Well, I don't, I guess, I guess Bill Marshall's still there. I haven't talked to him, but I, I, I think he's still there. Franklin doesn't go there very often yet, but yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's but kind it of a closed. One person. Bill, Bill's one person. Why can't he be there running the thing? You know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm, so I'm sure he sprays everything down and all that good stuff too, because there's other shows that run there. I think that they're still right. doing it. I don't know. I don't, I haven't really asked. So I'm okay. doing all my, all my work from home. So, yeah. So, and I can do it through the computer so I can load everything up there. So it's working for me that way. And, yeah. uh, hopefully people are still listening to talking toots if they were yeah, even well, listening yeah, in the first place. What else are they going to do? Yeah, they right. <laughs> So I'm, just, I'm trying to keep it light and I've been uh, doing uh, a lot of the legends, you know, radio legends and stuff like that. So, so, you know, and I, I replayed some of the stuff that we did earlier before we were kind of uh, shut down here. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Well, so. I've got the, uh, I've got our little room down here is, is, uh, I've got shelves up with all my Elvis decorations on it. Oh, there you uh, go. the plates are out here. Um, uh, all the cars that, uh, where the doors and stuff, well, they're all on display and been cleaned up now. So we're jazzed up pretty good down here now. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Nobody to see it, but you guys, but Hey, I know, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> not but, looking bad though. Yeah. Well, we're going to, we're going to start doing, like I say, when the weather gets, uh, are decent, we're going to have maybe, you know, kids can stop over and hang in their cars and we can talk to them from, you know, from the porch or whatever. So it's, yep. it's, yep. it's we got to do, you got to do something like that. You got to, you got to have some human contact somehow. If you can't, right. you know, can't, I going to be real hard, not hugging, but you know, that's, that's one. Yeah. I'm a big hugger. I like to hug. So yeah. That, that's going to be tough. But, um, the, like I say, it's the new norm. You've got to get used to it until, until, uh, the vaccine actually comes out and we can right. feel safe again, I guess. Yeah. But I'm watching, I'm watching a program on Netflix and it's like, <laughs> it's about the, you know, COVID-19 and it, and it says that this is just kind of the start of some of the viruses that are going to be coming our way. So it's like, this, this could be the norm. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot for the good news. You hey, know no I mean? problem. Yeah. I was, uh, yeah. Th- I was hoping to find some stuff out about how, you know, it's going to be going away, but now they're telling us there's plenty of viruses left out there yet. So, oh, good. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Well, I'll tell you what, I've never been, I've never worried too much about pandemics and this, that, and the other thing, but this one, this one, I actually stood up and started paying attention to it. Yeah. Got me a little worried. So. Oh yeah. 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 Me too. So yeah. Um, anyway, this, this conversation turned from <laughs> fun about your head to, to kind of not, not, not so fun, but anyway, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I was actually thinking about, um, you know, since when the weather gets better, I, I actually could set a studio up out in my, my, my yard, <laughs> you know, and, uh, oh, yeah, we both yeah, could do that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, can get uh, mic cords that are six foot apart from everybody and, you know, everybody can have their own mic and, and, oh, yeah. uh, I can record the show right there and, and do it live right there at the, uh, in my, in my front of my, my front yard. So there you go. Right. As well, long think, as I as long as I get rid of my lake first, then you know, then we can do it. Yeah, but. yeah, I like it. That's the first thing I thought of when I when I saw that was because I just got through doing some Johnny Cash. Yeah, and that was high. one of the songs that I did. Five feet high and right. Yeah, <laughs> how high is the water, Mama? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, I was gonna I was gonna thinking about trying to catch something in there, but I don't think there's anything in there to catch. But well, uh, yeah. no, not unless it's there for a while. Yeah, yeah. Well, we got frogs. I we got some frogs, man. I tell you what, in the backyard, our little pond in the backyard, I've been hearing some frogs like crazy. It's just it's going nuts back there with frogs. So <laughs> yeah, they're, I, they're I, having I, a good it, time. Yeah, my, my backyard is moss. Yeah, so it's all moss. Yeah, yeah. So and I can't kill it, but I asked the vet about it as far as the dog, and no, it's not going to hurt the dog any. So she's got a real nice blanket to sleep on out there or play or so she's happy. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah. You got to keep your dog happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I try to keep mine yard. happy. The front yard is looking good. I got all the solar lights are out. Uh, uh, the tulips, I've got a couple hundred tulips that are blooming. My three cherry trees, they've got leaves. Uh, the one's going to blossom pretty soon. So, and the lawn's got the fertilizer on it. It's been cut once, and the leaves are going off it. So that's okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, I actually. What I, else are you going to do? Or what? I actually broke down and went and got some bird food because I want to see our birds again, you know. So we oh, got, that, that's another story. Yeah. I think these birds forgot that there's a coronavirus around. And, uh, every day I got to fill that thing up. Oh, really? Well, they're, they're <laughs> crazy out here. <laughs> birds that i've never seen before oh i know me too i've seen some very very unusual types that we don't even know i mean we're looking at our little michigan book trying to identify them and we're not even in sure the what backyard they are back here i got a, one of my trees has got a great big dead trunk in it uh from years and the woodpeckers got holes all through it yeah. there was a woodpecker up there the other day i think he was two foot tall i thought he was going to knock the whole tree down <laughs> every time he was pecking it the ground shook yeah yeah I always thought you were the biggest pecker. But anyway, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> talking tunes, and we're talking with the one, the only, Mr. Peter Tripp, the curly-headed kid in the third row. And, yeah, he's still with us. He hasn't died yet. So, you know. But speaking of death. Yeah, not yet. Speaking of death, though. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Staying in like this is driving me nuts, though. So maybe I'll go nuts first. Yeah, yeah. Just you know. Well, luckily you and I don't have guns, so you know that way we can't shoot ourselves. Yeah, and we're both retired, so staying in is something that we're kind of used to in a way. Yeah, in a way. Yeah, except for like yeah. you and I both like to get out and do something in our yards, but it's been so freaking cold. Hey. Yeah, I went out. I, <laughs> I went out. I was gonna I said, you know what? Well, it's not going to rain today. So what does it do? It snows. Yeah. And I said, it's not, it's going to be nice tomorrow. Although I said, well, I'll go out and pick up some of those leaves and put my coat on, my beanie, my gloves. I was out for two minutes, came back in, said, no, it's too cold. Yeah. Well, plus the wind. Wind is, is, is the worst yeah. thing. We, uh, yeah. We you walk into that. that wind. You can't get rid of the wind. It just, it. it I know it. I mean, it could That's be. That's all we get here now is cold and wind. Yeah. Well, it could be like 60 degrees, but the wind makes it feel like it's 30. So there you go. Yeah. Anyway, I guess anyway, so uh, we're kind of we like lost a little old, Richard. We're a couple like a couple old men bitching on the porch, front porch at each other. There, here we go. Yeah, I got a kind of a doggone wind. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> little Richard, yes, we did. Yeah, and, and the dis- well, and the dispute, of course, I I keep having, and I I talked to Don Anderson, and he he agrees with me that I think the king of rock and roll was uh, Chuck Berry. Um, little Richard always claimed that he was the king of rock and roll. And of course, Elvis had the title, but what, what do you think first, before we get into little, little, well, Elvis was the, Elvis was the king of rock and roll. I think, uh, little Richard and Chuck Berry, they were the king of the rock and roll blues type music. Yeah. But Chuck Berry was pretty rock, man. He was, he was very rock with that guitar of his. I mean, yeah, but he still had that he still had that blue sound in a lot of his music. Yeah, uh, in the background, you know, I'm a background to a music like Bo Diddley. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Cause, you know, cause you, it was kind of. You could and go. of course, I when I when I saw Little Richard, of course, it, it was in Schenectady, uh, and I'd have to look and see. But uh, Ready Teddy, which he didn't write uh, or rip it up, was just coming out, so it was right. During that summer, whatever year that was, I saw him. And, of course, being a black guy, he didn't get the big venues like Elvis did. Right, so right, right. he was in our union hall, which was called uh, Shaughnessy Hall in Schenectady, which was a little small union hall. But he rocked the place. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he put on one heck of a show. I mean, what you don't remember what year that was, though, huh? No, you know, I don't have my book out here, but if you look up, rip, rip it up, and Ready Teddy, yeah. I, right in that area there. Yeah, because, I mean, 55 was right around when they started having their big hits, both Chuck Berry, Little Richard, and Elvis, so. Yeah, I think uh, Rip It Up, Ready Teddy, something like that might have been 56, yeah. 57, right in there. Yeah, because, I mean, because Elvis came out with uh, um, That's All Right Mama, it was 54, wasn't it? But I mean, it, it, didn't, it didn't hit it, till later. It, it could, yeah, because he originally did that on the Sun label. Then RCA bought him out. Yeah, and then a lot of that stuff became hits afterwards. But uh, Blue Moon of Kentucky, that's all right, Mama, stuff like that. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it was, it was. It's anyway, Little Richard. Too bad because I mean, he was a heck of an entertainer. Heck of a. Um, I mean, I, I we've got that. You've got that one video that we've watched that. Uh, 
I mean, he went and did Rip It Up and Ready Teddy. He, he spent like 20 minutes doing those songs and he tore it up. Kind of like, you know, kind of yeah. like before Jerry Lee Lewis did his thing. You know, that's what Little Richard was kind of, kind of that kind of a showman on the piano and everything. So, yeah. Good yeah. Stuff. Well, Chuck Berry, Chuck Berry was famous for his uh, duck walk. Right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, pumping piano. And Little Richard, his his profile pictures, him standing up with his leg up on the piano. Yeah, yeah. That was it. And Jerry Lee Lewis, of course, was uh, how he would uh, all of a sudden stand up and his uh, stool he was in would fly through the air and he'd bang on the on the on the piano. And then, of course, Chuck Berry would do the uh, duck walk across the stage. So they all had their little things that they did to get the crowd all excited. Yeah. See one. See one thing about you though you know minus a lot of us is you got to see those people you got to see little richard chuck berry and elvis presley and i don't know about did you yeah did you see little did you see uh jerry lee too or yeah oh yeah yeah how about johnny i'm cash? getting a little yeah johnny cash yeah yeah so you saw all those guys. uh uh but i'm getting a little lonely i'm getting a little lonely because they're going by the wayside here yeah, yeah. well fats domino you saw him too didn't you Oh yeah, saw all those all the all the big ones, yeah. and of course there was always the small ones that were with them, you know. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, and of course some of these were some of these were small ones that uh, were with the big ones, and of course they, they little Richard would um, would be with somebody like Chuck Willis or Roy Brown or somebody like that, or by himself. But he wouldn't appear with like Annette Funicello and Fabian and th- that group, you know, because right, right. that was your, that was white teenage thing. Yeah. And of course, Little Richard was the the black blues uh, type guy. So yeah, yeah, gospel. Although guy, he yeah. changed, he changed all that. Yeah. Well, you know, so his real name is Pen. His real name is Peniman, Richard Peniman. Richard Peniman, yeah. And, yeah, and you'll see a lot of those on on the on the records. Uh, well, he co-wrote almost all the hits. There's a few of them where name doesn't appear, but his name appears on a lot of them. Yeah, just like the Big Bopper wrote a lot of songs that people don't don't know about. Yeah, don't, yeah, don't know about. Yeah, yeah. J. P. Richardson, and right. then who's J. P. Richardson? You know. Yeah, he wrote. Uh, uh, what's that? The one about the 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 wooden Indian. Um. The- the wooden Indian? Yeah, there were something the Indian there. It was anyway. It was it was a song you did that I always liked. Uh, <laughs> can't think of it now, though. Of course, yeah. You know, it's, uh, that's it's, a good one. I love that. <laughs> the wooden Indian. All right. I'll think of it. I'll think of it by the time we hang up. I know that. But anyway, um, running bear. Running bear. Yeah, that's it. Running bear. Yeah. 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 I thought that was the one. Running bear. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was. Uh, that yeah. was Big Bopper. He wrote that. Yeah, yeah. little 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 white dove. Yeah, yeah. Um, ba, um, ba, um, ba, um, ba. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the, it, what surprised me was, uh, of course, this is down. I, I'm I'm reading this, but uh, this did happen. I remember this shortly after uh, "Rip It Up" and them things. He uh, after the Australian tour, he he denounced rock and roll. And over there, he threw all his gold rings and his braid and stuff in the river and became religious. Yeah. And went to the Bible college, uh, of course, and then retired. But the retirement didn't uh, didn't last for long. Right. I think a few years, three or four years or something, he was back in flamboyant as ever. Yeah. Well, so, that was uh, I, that was in the documentary that uh, they did about him, too. The same thing where he taken off these... His, diamonds and gold and throwing them in the in the river and all the people around him are looking like what the heck are you doing man yeah yeah i'm surprised and then of course he was in, in uh yeah down down and out in beverly hills uh, he did that theme song great gosh am which is one of my favorites one of my favorites yeah yeah we, we actually, and then he also re- he also recorded on the okay label which was a deep blues label did a song called uh well and then when he got done with all that, he went to the Mercury label, had a couple of minor hits there. Um, one of them is um, he got what uh, what he wanted, and that was on the Mercury label. So, other than that, most of his, most of all my forty fives, I'd say I got fifteen, twenty of them are all uh, on the specialty label. Yeah, Little Richard. So yeah, so there and you of go. course, one of his, uh, one of the people that. Uh, um, 
he liked and was influenced by was uh, Mahila Jackson. Okay. Right. And also, he also had a brother and a sister, uh, uh, Joe May and Rosetta Thorpe. And uh, but uh, they tried to get him into the religious uh, thing, but I guess he went on. I don't know. He went on some tours or something, medicine tours or something, and yeah, yeah sometimes in drag, and then you know what happened after that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's well, yeah? Thing. So <laughs> too yeah. bad to see him go. You know what I mean? It is. Yeah. I mean, he was quite an entertainer. I mean, I, I, you know, down and out in Beverly Hills too. He actually was pretty funny in that movie. Also, he played the yeah, played the yeah. flamboyant uh, na- neighbor. I guess you could say, kind of the kind of the Don Knotts yeah. neighbor kind of thing. You know, so yeah. I was out. Re- I was out recording the other day, and I did a Tex Ritter. Tex Ritter did a couple of songs that I liked. Uh, called the Bandit, and I leaned on a man, and of course he did Hillbilly Heaven. Oh yeah, and uh, I got a funny feeling that if he comes back and does "Hillbilly Heaven" now, it's going to be one of the longest forty fives you ever heard. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um, now, did you, did you see um, the Big Bopper and, and uh, Buddy Holly and um, um, Richie Valens too before they did the crash? Before or? they died, yeah. not all at the same time, though. Well, I we would imagine it would be before they die. <laughs> I don't know how you can see them after that, but I guess you can see their. Yeah, well, well, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw Buddy Holly uh, the summer before he died. Okay. Richie Valens was in that group with Annette Fulicello, Fabian. Okay. And that was in, that was in the RP, RPI Fieldhouse in Albany. Now, and I can't I can't remember. Where I saw the big bopper, I don't, I don't remember that one. Yeah. Okay. Now, but uh, now it'll they, come to me someday. They traveled. They traveled like in buses of what? How many different buses artists? and buses and airplanes? Yeah. But how many different artists used to come to do those shows, though? Some of them. Well, like I said, Little Richard appeared by himself sometimes, and sometimes there was three or four. Yeah. Especially if they were just up and coming, or they just wanted to fill some time, and that's where some of your bigger artists came from. Yeah. Now, big. Now, now I was going to to Buddy Holly. Was he? He was he kind of the quite the thing back then, or was this more after he died? Oh no! No, that was uh, he was big. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, cause he had, he had a ton of hits for as young as he was when he died. He, yeah. Yeah. Well, of course, when I first saw him, I thought he was a geek. Well, yeah, but those big old. Of course, we didn't on. have. I, yeah, I we we didn't have that term back then. No, uh, we called them something else. I can't remember what it was. <laughs> I'm sure it wasn't good. Yeah, those thick glasses, and we're going, yeah. "Oh my yeah. God, what is this?" Yeah, 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 yeah. Because kind of like Pat, kind of like Pat Boone coming out, "Love Letters in the Sand." I said, "Turn off the radio. I want rock and roll." You know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but then you ended up liking Pat Boone and Perry Como, oh, and yeah. all that stuff. So, oh yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah, the right. Yeah, that was back when you were wearing leather jackets and slicking your hair back, right? Uh, well, that's when I met Elvis. It was shortly after I, I not met him, but heard of Elvis in '55 when he did Heartbreak Hotel. That's when I started the chains hanging off the belt and the black leather jacket and the DA haircut. <laughs> and that got me into a lot of trouble. Yeah, I could imagine. Especially yeah. in school. Yeah, you could have been you could you might have been the original Fonzarelli, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I claimed that fame a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you should you should get that stuff back, put all that stuff back on, and go over to Wisconsin and stand in front of the bronze fonts, and you guys could both put your fingers up. It'd be great. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm sorry, your thumbs up. Your thumbs up. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, um, all right. So, who else? Is, you said there's somebody else that passed away, not in music, but in that just recently yeah. passed. Oh, Jerry Stiller. Oh yeah, from uh, Seinfeld and from um, Seinfeld. Yeah, there's that other show that he did with I can't think of the name of yeah, it. Yeah, but he was awesome. Yeah, he did he another was very show. Very funny. Very funny. Yep, and he made appearances on the Honeymooners. Made appearances on uh, oh, what's her and, name, the Carol Burnett show. He made, he made a lot of appearances. Well, him, him, in fact, him, it, him and his. I wife. don't know if they. 
Him I don't know if they planned this or not, but I was watching TV a little while ago, and my wife had uh, In the Heat of the Night on. Yeah. And I walked in the room, and there he was. They had that episode on where he plays the rabbi, and the kids uh, damaged the uh, synagogue and yeah. stuff like that. Now, I don't know if they did that on purpose or not. Well, he's, he was a heck of an actor, because, I mean, he did, he did drama, and he, he did comedy so well. He was funny. Yeah. I mean, he was the, he was the funniest thing. When him and uh, Estelle Harris, who played the the mother and uh, George's mother, and him the father, right? God, when those two were together, it was just it was just hilarious. That was some of the best Seinfeld stuff ever. And then uh, yeah, and then he played the the father the father in law that slept in the basement of I can't remember yep. the name of the the show, but he was yeah. he, he was the show because I mean those yeah two, I saw. I- I saw that to today, do, and I can't remember what it was. Yeah, because those two tried to do a show again. I forget what the name of it was. Those tried two tried to do the show again, but without him, it just didn't didn't make it. He was it didn't work. Show. Yeah, he he was funny. Yeah. And I remember watching him and his wife on Ed Sullivan show. They used to do that comedy routine, uh, Stiller and Mira and Stiller, yeah. or Stiller and Mira. Or yeah, like that. that's right. Yeah, that's where that's where I remember seeing the two the two together mostly. And then, of course, the son, very famous, too, you know, did a lot of acting, yeah. did a lot of comedy, yeah. directing movies and all kinds of stuff, too. So, yeah, yeah. Um, great guy. Man, he was funny. I never did meet him, but I, I did meet uh, Estelle Harris, and she talked very highly of him that we're, you know, working with him, too. And, uh, yeah, he was he was funny. Funny man. Oh, well. So, you know, we all... Yeah. We all... But so, did, did how's any, our little group... How's our little group doing? I don't know. You know, I talked to Greg, basically. I reached out, yeah. but I haven't really touched anybody else. I talked to Britta, wished her happy, uh, happy Mother's Day, and that's about it. I heard she's working again or something. I don't really know. So um, just it would be nice to, if it ever get any warm weather, we could do some distancing and, like I say, get some six-foot mic cords, and we're, <laughs> we're all set to go, you know. Look it sure would be nice. Yeah, it would be to get us all back together again. Because, you know, I listened to... Uh, some of our old shows and it was it worked really well and i'm i miss it that's for sure that's for sure yeah yeah you got it but um anyway hey i appreciate you talking to me today there sir taking time out of your busy day because this this you probably should be outside doing something <laughs> yeah i've got the broom dustpan and broom next to me here okay well any anytime you want to come <laughs> Anytime you want to come over, yeah. we'll we'll uh, we'll get out of the house and let you do it, and then we'll fumigate it when we get back, and we'll be. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I don't. There's nothing else I can do in this house. I've changed every room. Yeah. I've changed something, rearranged something, threw this out, threw that out, redecorated our whole studio down here. I mean, come on. Yeah, the studio that we can't even use. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, maybe, you know, you got those basement windows. You could shove a mic out the the window for me, and I could sit there and talk <laughs> on the window. <laughs> there you go. Hey, we got three windows. We could put three mics that have the camera pointed toward the windows. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or we could stick the cameras outside or something. I don't know. But, yeah, we could yeah. figure something out. Well, you know, just like, you know, That's- on Mother's Day, we had uh, we had our kids come over, but it was so freaking cold. That they could only stand there for you know two or three minutes to talk to us because everybody, right. everybody was so cold. But we got had Patrick. Yeah, I had Patrick over yesterday. First time I've seen. Well, Dave stopped in and then uh, gave mom a mom gave my wife a, uh, a present. He put it on the porch and, and you know and, and called her and told her it was there. Yeah. And I had just seen him pull out of the driveway, so I went up and got it. So she got that. Then later in the day, Patrick, I told Patrick, I said, can you come get this big refrigerator out of the downstairs? I said, I got the doors off it and all the shelves out. And I said, I can move it, but I can't get it up those three steps. Well, he came over, walked in the side gate, came over, came downstairs, grabbed the hand truck, bum, 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 up. And I said, thank you very much. And he left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, grandkids are wonderful. Well, it's nice to have a big grandson. You yeah, know that? Yeah, I got I got one that I, I'm, I'm going to have to paint my... Uh, the, the eaves of my house and uh, I'm, I'm going to have to get him over here. I'll maybe I'll even let him use the, uh, the, the power washer to clean it up a little bit before we, we, we paint it over there or something. I don't know, but yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun to have uh, the big, the big boy grandsons coming over once in a while. I tell you what, I got a, yep. I got a couple of granddaughters though that can pretty much handle themselves pretty well too. So there you go. <laughs> there you go. So, Hey, will you take care of yourself? All right, I- what? Yeah, I understand you. I understand you got some uh, something new in the family. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> by the time there you go. Wait. By the time way, to, way to go, Grandpa. Yeah, I had nothing to do with it. Well, sorta. I guess I sorta had something well, to do with it. Yeah. Yeah, you were in the you were you were somewhere in the background there. Right, something, yeah. something was connected. <laughs> yeah. Background to the music. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> oh, I think I go. I think I'm gonna go in the studio and play some Little Richard. There you go. Yeah, was, we got to play some Little Richard, even though this is a '70s, '80s, and '90s station. We got to we got to do one for for uh, Little Richard too. That's for sure. But so what? It, right. What it, so I don't know. I still say I still say Chuck Berry was the king of rock and roll. But anyway, you know, that's just my opinion. <laughs> well, he was the first one. Let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought so. Anyway. All right, man. You take care of yourself, and uh, maybe we'll uh, stop over in the car and wave to you or something. There you go. Are you, are yeah, we, we're supposed to. We're supposed to get some seventy weather coming up. Although it's supposed to rain all five days, and it's going to be in the upper sixties and around seventy naturally. But yeah, yeah. Maybe we can do it. Right? Maybe you said yeah, drive by, beat the horn. I'll come up there and drive by, beat the horn, and drop that woofer off. Okay. So all I got to do. is all I gotta do is put it in front of the door. You grab a hand truck when I leave and bring it in. Yeah, yeah. Either that, or you can like drop off Patrick too, and we can have him bring it down for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Will you take care of yourself, and we'll talk to you again real soon. All right. Sounds good. Can't wait to get together. Yeah. Right. Like I can say maybe uh, stick that microphone out that ba- that uh, basement window, and we'll do a reminiscing show. There you go. Sounds good. All right. Take care. Catch you later. Yep. See you later. Yep.